Hey guys, uh, this is a part two to my previous video. I wasn't originally going to make a part two, but there have been some developments that I feel like you should know about my treatment methods in the previous video. And also my other video was more like me just guessing on what I should do and not really knowing if it would work or not. But now that I've been treating my plants for a week now, I know what works and what has been working. So I'm going to give you guys an actual rundown of my whole uh, treatment process that actually works, okay? And I've finished treating all of the plants in my bedroom and now we're moving into the living room. So I'll show you my process on the first batch of my living room plants. So first, I'm going to give you a very important update on those baby spider plants and what I did with them and what I did wrong, okay? So let's just go look at them. All right, so here are the baby spider plants. I left them in the solution for two days straight because I honestly forgot about them. I know, it's it's horrible. And I took them out. I rinsed them off really well. I let them dry out overnight. And then I put them in water hoping that there might still be a chance that they could root. I cut off all the dead rotting uh, leaves as well. I don't think they're going to root. I think they might be too far gone, but I'm going to leave them in water and just see what happens. But this is what not to do, guys, okay? So yeah, don't do what I did, okay? If you're going to treat baby plants in the neem oil, Castile soap and water solution, I would recommend leaving them in there maybe 30 minutes max. Like, even 30 minutes may be too long. Uh, yeah, so this is just... <laughs> Please don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes, please. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's take a look at those living room plants. Uh. So the condition of these plants has declined significantly, and it seems like my worst fears are coming true, okay? Like the thrips seem to be killing the plants faster than I can treat them. And yeah, I'll just show you. So here's some thrip damage. It seems like they're concentrated in the, these two leaves. And if you, if I pull back the leaf here, oh my god, they're like, oh, it's sickening. Yeah, that just mm, makes my skin crawl. It just makes my skin crawl. But yeah, so we're going to be putting my big Monstera Philippe. He's going in the tub. This little Monstera, not Monstera, Philodendron Moonlight's going in there. My Diffenbachia Camille has declined, like, really noticeably. And you can even see the fucking thrip. Look at that bitch. Look at it. It's crawling towards its eggs. Why don't you focus? But yeah, you can see it in the eggs. My philodendron narrow is significant, has taken damage. So those are the big three that are going to be going in the tub. And we're going to take care of them like right now. Okay, so I managed to fit Philippe. He's taking up pretty much the whole tub. My Diffenbachia and my Philodendron Moonlight. I couldn't fit my Philodendron Narrow. That'll be in the next batch. Okay. So first, we're going to snip, snip all of the thrip-infested leaves. I'm going to take off all of these yellow leaves and the dead husks on this one. Everything dead, dying, or thrip-damaged leaves are going to be removed. So I pinched my finger in the clippers. Uh, I got a Dennis little band-aid. We're all good. Okay, so I've removed all of the damaged and dead leaves. And now we're going in with Captain Jacks. Yes. Ow, it hurts my finger. <laughs> oh yeah, I gloved my injured finger. So just sprain these bitches real good. And then, yeah. Now usually I let 
the Captain Jacks dry a little bit before I do this next step, but because I'm showing you the complete process, we'll go ahead and do it now. So I just want to break up the top layer of soil with this dowel rod. And the soil seems to be pretty loose on all of them. So I don't really need to break it up that much, but usually on the more compacted soil, I'll break it up with the style rod. Next, we're going to sprinkle in the systemic houseplant insect control, insect control right into the top layer of the soil. Now it's okay to get a little bit on the leaves because we're going to water them in a second. Now we're gonna water them deeply with filtered water. To really work that systemic into the soil. All right, now we'll let these guys sit in the tub and dry out or at least until the excess moisture is drained out and then we will move them here to the hallway and I'll place them along this towel so that any kind of excess moisture won't get on my floors and that's why this guy's staying here he was from the last batch and so the treated plants will just chill in this hallway on this towel when I'm ready to bring in the next batch of plants to be treated. And this is kind of how the cycle goes and what my process has been like this past week. So yeah, that's what my process has been like. I've just moved the treated plants from the tub into the hallway onto that towel. And then I move a new batch of plants into the tub to be treated. And then when the ones in the tub that have been treated are ready to be moved, I move the ones from the towel back into the positions that they were in. And then I've been doing that all week and I feel like it's working and I'll show you why I think it's been working. So here's a treated plant update. So here's my Ficus altissima, which is in one of the first batches to be treated. And as you can see by these leaves right here, they're starting to perk up. Oh my God, I'm so excited because before they were as droopy as that one right there. They were droopy and close to the main stalk of the plant. And now they're starting to rise. They're starting to go back into their place. They're supposed to be. <laughs> I'm just so excited that the treatment seems to be working and that my plants are starting to be happy again. Also, another thing I found when I was treating my plants were some impromptu updates on my plants and that I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't treating them and they're so cute. First, I when I was treating my uh, big panda plant, I was clearing away the dead leaves and I saw one of the dead leaves had a baby growing out of it. I'll insert that footage of when I first found it right here. Oh my gosh guys, look. Look what I just found. I found this. What is this? It's a half dead leaf and it has a baby growing out of the center and roots. This bitch has roots. It was just sitting on top of the soil of the mother plant and I was like, what the fuck? It's got a baby. How does this happen? I've never seen this happen before. I've never heard of this happening. What? Is this normal? And here's the second one. Has roots. Has roots. This is so wild, this is so bizarre, but it's so cute to look at it. And here's the little guy now. I potted him and the other leaf that had a root into this little pot of soil. I put a little bit of the systemic in it just in case. And I have him under this little plastic cloche to keep in the humidity. And I can't wait to see what he'll grow into. Also, along that same note, this is my amaryllis plant, and she grew beautifully over the winter. She was this massive stalk, and she put out four blooms. If you want to see her in all her glory, go check out my Instagram. I have all of her pictures up there. But after she bloomed, I noticed that 
she was a little overwatered. And so when I was trying to wick away that extra, excess moisture from her soil, because this pot doesn't have a drainage hole, um, her stalk just like tipped over and collapsed and splintered. And that's, this is where her stalk used to be. So I just trimmed her back down to the bulb, like how I bought her. And I just noticed this now. She has a new leaf. She's growing again. That means she's not dead. She's alive. She's going to make it. I'm so happy. And I'm so excited to see how far she'll grow this time. Also, when I was looking closer into my plants to inspect them for thrips, I noticed that my Sansevieria, I believe Cylindrica, has babies. There's one baby. There's two babies. And then there's three babies. So many babies i'm so glad i'm not killing this one <laughs> and that she's putting out new babies i have to repot her because she's still in the soil that i bought her in so i have a lot of plants i need to repot that are still in like their nursery pots and nursery soil so that'll be a separate video look forward to that soon <laughs> last but not least i have a new baby spider plant that my friend gave me it's a hawaiian spider plant i believe and uh, it's rooting <laughs> I'm so excited. This is another update that really made me happy. And it's the little things, especially when you're dealing with a thrift infestation and it gets you really down. It's nice to have these little plant updates to keep you going. It makes me so happy. So yeah, that's my uh, thrift treatment, what not to do's, my new and improved thrift treatment process that's working and some really exciting plant updates to kind of even out the thrip madness. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!